everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make ground items. Uh, that's A ground item is something that when you open your inventory window you can actually see your armor there whenever you mouse over it in your inventory. Uh, it's also whenever you drop it on the ground it's what hits the ground and bounces around and you kick it and pick it up from the world item. It's a, a ground item is a world item. They are one and the same. Um, some of this will be familiar to you, those of you who have ever created weapons. Uh, this will be pretty easy for you. But I have gone ahead and made this extraordinarily simple, far more simple than any other tutorial you've probably ever seen on the subject. Uh, first thing you need to do is you need to go to my webpage uh, on the Skyrim Nexus, uh, creating custom armor step by step by Nidacy. Hopefully you already know the place. If not, that's skyrim.nexusmods.com slash mods slash 19249. Uh, as soon as you get there, uh, you need to go to the files and go down to miscellaneous and I want you to grab the ground item tutorial video resource. Uh, just go ahead and download it manually or with the manager. Either way, it doesn't matter. And as soon as you get that, I want you to browse to your folder where you put your custom armor. Uh, remember I created this uh, I think like three tutorials ago. I created the uh, one Nidacy folder where I put all of the custom armor that I've created. <laughs> Uh, and got it all packed together and have it working in game so it's now it's standalone and craftable. Well now we're going to create ground items for it. So you know you downloaded the ground item tutorial video resource. You're going to go ahead and double click that and open it. And you notice there's just one little NIF in there. It's a very teeny file. I want you to just go ahead and grab that NIF and just drag it out and drop it into your uh, custom armor folder. All right, and Just leave it right there. Now, as soon as you've done that, you can go ahead and close this window and go ahead and pop open your 3DS Max. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and import the torso. And I'm just going to show you probably the torso, maybe one other piece, because they're all done fairly much the same. There's nothing different in between pieces. They're all identical uh, for creating ground items for them. Uh, and you want to browse to your custom armor folder. So I'm going to go to my desktop and go to data, um, meshes, armor one night to see and in here I am going to import my torso F underscore zero you want torso F underscore zero that's the one you're going for alright so uh, whichever your torso is go ahead and import it or whatever item you're working with go ahead and import it. you do not want a skeleton okay we're creating a ground items ground items have no skeletons so just uncheck import skeleton make sure your settings are identical to mine and select import which I should be, all you have to do is uncheck import skeletons as by now in this uh, length in the tutorials. <laughs> A little stuffy today. <laughs> Alright, so here's my uh, basic uh, armor that I've crafted. It's my one level. Well, first thing I can see is I don't want to see the body whenever I drop the armor on the ground because that would be kind of weird, like I drop the armor and all of a sudden there's this body on the ground with it. Well, where'd that come from? <laughs> So just delete your body or anything on it that's not supposed to show. Now, to keep this very simple, I want to select all the objects in the scene. Now, at this point, this is going to be landing on the ground, so you have to think, do you want to change it or morph it in any way? Do not shrink it. Let me just throw that out there right now. Never shrink the armor you're going to throw on the ground. World items are naturally smaller, I guess. they I think they have some kind of scale property. When you drop them on the ground, they automatically scale smaller. Seems to me like it does. Not 100% sure on that. If you want to, you can maybe flatten it a little bit. You know, kind of go like that and flatten it. It doesn't really matter. I always just leave mine the original shape. So if you want to, you can just leave it the original shape. So just select everything, right click, and we're going to select rotate. Now notice I am facing back. This is very important. The front of your armor, uh, you guys already know this, but the front is actually the back in the Havoc engine. So everything that's front is back because when it gets in game it swaps it back around. So you want to actually rotate this forward. All right. So I'm rotating it forward to where it looks like the character just fell, you know, the armor, if it was on a character, it just fell flat on its face. You're just going to kind of rotate it and kind of look in this window make sure you're kind of, um doesn't have to be 100% perfect, just make sure you're like pointing straight down. And then you want to right click and we want to move it. So now we're just going to move it and I want to kind of come in here so you can see this. Look real close at where I'm putting it. I'm just putting it to where it's barely, you see this little, it's really hard to see, but you see this line here? It's kind of like a mesh. You want to kind of get right on top of it, and you kind of want to center, be centered. 
you know, as center as you can get and kind of on top. You can move it up a little bit. And just you can look at this black line here as you do this and just kind of line it up. This does not have to be perfect. Really, it doesn't matter. You want it to actually go through the floor of it just a tad bit. Kind of see how the breasts are going through the bottom of it just a little bit. That's fine. You actually want that. It helps with the collision. All right, so once I have that all set up and it's just kind of sitting there on the ground, now you can, if you want, try to move pieces around. I usually don't. I just leave it all the way it is and just... I mean, why mess with it? It's just something that's going to be thrown on the ground uh, or what people can observe when they open their inventory and look at it. Okay, so once you have it lined up on the ground, got to kind of look at it like this, okay? This is what you're going to see when you get in game and you open your inventory. That's what they're going to see. They're going to see it's going to look like that. That's where it's going to appear. And it'll automatically center itself in the inventory window with what we're going to do next. Right, the next thing you want to do is once you have it all centered with everything selected, you're going to go up here to the hierarchy. Okay, and then you're going to click on effect pivot only. This is the pivot for the object. Um, it's the object's natural center. So what we want to do is we want to set this to 0, 0, 0 on the XYZ. With everything selected, effect pivot only, you're going to type 0, 0, 0. Now it's on 0, 0, 0. Deselect effect pivot only go back to create or whatever and then right click on with everything selected right click and say convert it to an editable mesh we do that because some of it still had skin data on it and all we want these to be is a straight editable mesh you do not want any modifiers on this whatsoever alright so now that's all done we're ready to export it so we're gonna go up here we're gonna file we're gonna export this and we're gonna export it to the folder that you know our custom armor is in so I go to my desktop I'm going to scroll down and go to Data, Meshes, Armor, One Night to See, and I'm going to find, um, see I got the ground items already in here. That's in there for a different reason. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and select File Name, all right, and we're going to type in um, Torso Geo for Ground, all right. So always put a geo on the end. That lets other people know that look at your files, that it's your ground item also helps you find your files easier and then just select save all right and we're just exporting it as a NIF uh, everything here is fine doesn't really matter on these settings and uh, just export alrighty now that's done I got my uh, ground item in here as you can see all right now the first thing you're gonna do is see I got my torso geo torso f0 torso f1 torso geo now what I want to do first I want to open up torso f0 and I'm just going to move that over here. And then I'm going to open up Torso Geo. And I'm going to grab that. And I'm just going to move that on top of my Torso F0 window. And then I'm going to grab my ground item. And I'm just going to double click that. And I'm going to drag that down next to them. Now what we got to do, and you'll notice inside the ground item, uh, this is just a box that I've thrown in here. Okay, we're going to be getting rid of that and replacing it. And uh, over here we have our armor that's, you know, laying face down on the ground, facing downward. You know, and it's all good. So, what we want to do is we want to put all this in here. And you'll notice this is a BS fade node, and we've always been working with NI nodes. There's nothing to worry about. They're nothing important. First thing you want you to do is open up the ground item in the BS fade node, always working in this window. I want you to select the box the, by clicking on the NI tri shape and hit control delete. And I just want you to delete it. Then I want you to come over here to this node and working on them one at a time down the line. You'll see I have several files here. That's why this is a good one to show you with. And I'm going to select the NI tri shape and hit control C. Now remember we don't have to change the names of the NI nodes of the main base node, the root nodes, we do not have to match those names. So don't even worry about that. Just do it like I do it. Just control C on your first one. Select, this is important, select the BS fade node when you paste so it automatically assigns the NI tri shape to this root node. Okay, so always select this before you paste. And then hit control V. And select my next one, control C, select the root node of the BS fade node, control V. And all I'm just doing is moving all these files onto this BS fade node, one after another. This one here, and I'm just gonna keep doing it until I got everything moved over. All right, now 
Now if you, you know, I scroll out, I can see that my entire armor is over here on the correct one, but it's not done yet. Uh, a lot of times you're going to have to fix the textures, okay? And actually, pretty much all the time you're going to have to fix the textures, because there's one important aspect of a texture. You always have to remove the skinned modifier on the shader flag one. It cannot be skinned or it will not show up in game. Uh, I can't explain the reason for that. It's technical. Uh, anyways, open up the NI try shape. Now, because we just exported this, a lot of you guys, your textures are going to be messed up. And that's why we imported the torso F underscore one, because we've already fixed those textures. So now we're going to go ahead and close the torso go dot nif. Just close that, and voila, there's our torso F underscore zero. Now open that up, and this has got all our BS shading, uh, lighting shader properties that we're going to move over one at a time. So with my first one select, I can see it's the little buckles. You'll notice that these will actually be imported into here backwards from what they've been exported into here. So if I select 50 here and I move in, that's actually the buttons. Okay. Now that's the last one in the list. Now if I select 10 here, you'll see that's the second one in this one, but it's the second to last in this one. That's just something to keep in mind. It helps your workflow a little bit faster. So uh, I'm going to start with 50 and 6, and I'm just going to control delete the BS lighting shader property on that. I'm going to open up 50 because I need this. Hit control C and hit control V. You're going to do this one at a time until you've replaced all of them. And you guys already know I'm just going to assign 32 to this. Now I have 32 assigned to it, but I got to do one more thing. I have to select the BS lighting shader property that I just imported. In shader flags one, you'll want to remove the SF skinned. All right, you have to get rid of SF skinned. And some of you will probably have to get rid of the spec. Well, actually, no, you don't because you already fixed all that. You already set everything up. So just remove the SF uh, skinned, and that'll take care of that. Now it'll actually show up. Those buttons will show up, but nothing else will yet. We have to fix it. So open up. Uh, I always like to leave them open as I'm working, so I know which ones I've already done. So I'm going to open up 8, and I'm going to select the BS Lighting Shader property, and I'm going to control delete it. Then here I already know that it's going to be 43, because they move up here and they move down here. So 43, I'm going to open it up, grab the BS Lighting, copy it, and paste it. And this is just going to be rinse and repeat. I'm just going to assign 32 again, and then I'm going to select the 32, and I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to remove the SF skinned. In Shader Flags 1, SF skinned has to be removed, or it will not show up in game. It won't work. All right, so now I'm going to go to 10. It's the third one down here. It's the third from the bottom here, where they move backwards. I'm just going to control copy the BS lighting shader here. I'm going to delete it from here, and I'm just going to paste it. Yeah, I'm just going to do this with all of them until they're all done. Select the BS Lighting Shader property. Remove the skinned. Rinse, repeat. Select 12 here. Control, delete. Select 29 here. Control, copy. And as you can see, I'm just going through and making sure every single piece has its texture replaced to the texture that we've already fixed and I'm removing the skinned from all of them. Do not want skinned on them. That's all I'm doing. Control delete. When, uh, you know, normally I actually join most of my pieces, but because this was a tutorial armor, this is a multi-piece armor. This is what Oblivion armors used to look like. 40 million pieces. <laughs> hmm. So a lot more complex. Anyways, I'll see you here in a second. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and continue to do this. Um, and I'll see you here in just a second because this video is out of time.